<laughs> I never check these. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I cannot. Uh, I can't train. Train wreck. Um, yeah, say, ma'am. I mean, if if it's like what are you doing? What it is, you can submit it to my mods, but um, I don't usually do that for like personal. But you can you can send it over to one of the mods if you. Uh, What's up, Monica Walker? Thanks for the Twitch Okay. Okay, so yet again, it's been a long time since I've made a video. But I'm back. Um, here we are again. I'm watercoloring in my watercolor sketchbook. Um, this is a prompt for Inktober again. Uh, the Inktober 52 weekly thing. Um, the prompt was Angel, and since I'm not religious in any sort of way, uh, my thoughts turned to Angelfish, and here they all are, all their personalities. Um, yeah, so... <sighs> truth time, story time, I feel like I've been on some sort of mental hiatus of sorts. I dove headfirst into this career um, back in April. Um, selling insurance, uh, life insurance, and while that sounds really, really boring, the thought of making a good deal of money because I'm really, really tired of being broke all the time, or at least living paycheck to paycheck, which has been like my whole life, um, even with Rory's income, we're just kind of like, you know, counting our pennies and having to be responsible. Sometimes little spouts of comfort, but, or, you know, where we don't have to... <laughs> have to look at our bank accounts every day to be sure we're not overspending on things. Um, it's uh, rare that we're able to do that. And anyway, this career uh, sounded like a really good fit. And I do believe in the value of life insurance. And um, so it was just, it was just one of those things that I thought I would try. I got my insurance license through the state which was a total pain. Um, state exams, I don't know what it, what it is about them, but even like going and getting your driver's license, they just make these tests so incredibly difficult um, and have all these questions that are just, you know, so arbitrary. Um, like, like on a driver's exam, like, um, you know, what's the fine for driving five miles an hour over the speed limit in a school zone if there's a school bus and 25 kids are on the bus and you run the stop sign. <laughs> like, what's the... I don't know. I don't know what the penalty is. That's not on the... That's not in the book, man. I don't know. I, uh, I actually ended up taking the wrong test twice. First time I failed it, and the second time I passed it by five points or something, only to go and try to purchase my license and finding out that I took the wrong exam. Um, so right before Rory and I went off to Colorado for a birthday trip for me this summer in June, um, I had to go and retake the correct exam less than 24 hours before we hit the road. And luckily I passed it. It was actually quite easy because I'd studied my tail off for the wrong one um, forever. So anyway, uh, how about Colorado? Let's, uh, let's take a little trip to Colorado. We, uh, we started out real early in the morning. Um, we stayed in Amarillo for the evening and took off the next day, arrived in Denver around four or five. Um, the next day we stayed at this little Airbnb. Um, 
this couple owned a house or rented a house or whatever um, and they had an extra room and we stayed in it and uh, it was actually in Aurora <laughs> right outside of Denver and um, it was like 10 minutes like we take we went out of this this neighborhood drive out of this neighborhood and go down a street for like three or four miles and then there's Denver so that's how close we were and uh, I got a new tattoo for my birthday. Um, it is a uh, lark bunting, which is the state bird. Um, it matches my uh, robin bird on my left shoulder that I got in London. Um, the, I guess it's the country bird. Um, the the official bird of England is a robin. Um, so I, I don't know. It made sense. I'm I'm in love with Colorado and uh, everything there. Everything about it. I wish it wasn't so far away. Slash. I wish I lived there. Um, but yeah, uh, we traveled a little bit within the state. We went up to Colorado Springs and um, Pikes Peak. Though the summit was closed, we got up as far as we could at Pikes Peak and got out and Zeus had some fun um, wandering around there and uh, actually not really fun because he hates the snow. <laughs> he he pretends he, it, you know, he tolerates it, but uh, it's, it's cold on the feet, so... Uh, we went to a whiskey distillery, um, same one we went to last time, actually, and, um, we went back there and I got a t-shirt and we had a little tasting. I think that was the day before we left. Uh, we also went to the Denver Zoo, which I'd never been to before and have heard mention of in various reptile-y YouTube videos, um, and I wanted to check it out. They have this one area that has like lots of nautical creatures, fish and um, crabs, stuff. Um, and of course, a whole bunch of snakes, which uh, was the whole reason I wanted to go because apparently I'm a snake nerd now. Um, they had all sorts of things. They had gaboon vipers and different cobras, uh, some rattlesnakes, different species of rattlesnake. Um, they had a bunch of amphibians, these crazy looking toads uh, that I forget the name of, and um, all sorts of things. This zoo was incredible. Um, I guess I haven't been to a zoo in a while, and I'm not like the biggest fan of zoos, for the record. I'm not a big fan of you know, keeping wild animals in cages, but um, I'm also of the opinion that zoos are good and they rehabilitate injured wildlife. Um, at least the good ones do. Uh, they're there to help um, rather than cage for the sake of caging. So, um, you know, there was a lot of that at the Denver Zoo, like, you know, sanctuaries and stuff. Um, so that was nice to see. And, uh, definitely will be returning. It was quite a treat. So yeah, when we got back from Colorado around uh, the middle of June, um, that's when I really started getting into this new career. Um, going to training classes, um, learning the ropes and the products and who they can help and why and um, who can qualify and levels of qualification for life insurance, all these things. Um, on top of all this other stuff that I've never known about before, um, I can't even begin to begin, but uh, it was all very useful. And um, last week, after stress and um, just generally trying to fit myself into this mold that um, I guess it just ultimately doesn't match my personality as a, a friend of mine um, perfectly ex described sales in general. Uh, I'm just not a salesperson. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard for one thing, but that's kind of 
it's not really the whole thing. It it just takes a certain type of personality to be able to sell things, even if it's something that's beneficial to the people that you love. Um, it still just felt kind of shysty, and I I don't know if I'm gonna sell something, it's gonna be my artwork. Um, as for a paycheck, I'm still working on that. Uh, as the days go on, I'm trying to find something. I don't know what it's going to be yet. It might be back in the service industry for tech support or something, but um, it's not going to be sales. It's never going to be sales. Um, but I like, like I mentioned though, I learned a lot. I really don't have any regrets. Um, I met some really fantastic people. And, uh, you know, life goes on, and I'm going to take the things that I learned um, at that job uh, with me for the rest of my life and apply it to different things. And, um, you know, you can, never, you can never have too much information about, about you know, certain <laughs> life things. Um, like I mentioned, life insurance is, is valuable and... Um, once I'm able to afford some, uh, I'm probably going to go with that company because they're transparent and honest and they're, they've been around for a really, really long time. Um, and yeah, I, I trust them with my life and, um, you know, we insure cars, we insure houses, um, but we don't, in, we don't think about insuring ourselves and... Uh, anyway, that's my, that's my little soapbox about all that. Um, so, also, we kind of adopted, uh, or purchased, or whatever you want to call it, a baby Plains Hognose Snake. She is coming up on three months old. She's so tiny and so sweet. These guys get a reputation for being drama noodles what the internet calls them, drama noodles, because they have these feisty little personalities. Um, they're actually venomous. Um, they have, they're rear fanged, and they tend to eat amphibians, like toads and stuff, out in the wild. Um, but they've got venom in their rear fangs. Um, as far as being harmful to humans, though, they really would need to think that you are food and really munch on you to do anything. Um, and by anything, we're talking like maybe some mild swelling. Um, it really depends person to person. Um, but like maybe your hand will swell a little bit and be itchy. Uh, but it's not your typical venomous like rattlesnake bite. Um, you're not going to the hospital. So, I'm anticipating this girl getting to be a teenager and getting kind of huffy at me because I want to pick her up or whatever. Um, but I, I know she'll never actually hurt me. And she's just so cute. And speaking of snakes, this one just turned one year old. Um, not too long ago. Where are you? Noodle. Nessie. Are you in your hut? Nope. Not in the hut. Is 
she under the moss? She is probably under this because it is dry. There she is. Noodle. Hi, birthday lady. Hi. It's a one-year-old snake. Come here. Happy birthday. Hi. She's like, no, I'm tired. This little noodle is one year old today. She hatched out of a shell of some sort. And now she feels big and strong. The last time I took a video of her, she was like barely two feet long. Probably not even yet. Now, now she's a super long girl. Look how long she is. She's so big. She's so chill. She has calmed down so much. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's where we are. We're uh, getting older and um, trying new things and not having regrets. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I did notice that during those four or so months that I was trying to, trying to sell life insurance to people. Um, I'd gotten so wrapped up in it that I couldn't relax. I couldn't, um, like sit down and draw anything. It's almost like I hadn't earned it because I didn't have any clients yet. So I had to sit here and think about it the whole time. And, uh, thus I didn't have really any room to be creative. Um, I did get out of the house and walk a lot. Um, we went to uh, the uh, green belt a lot and took a lot of walks and I de-stressed that way, but uh, art was just not a thing for so many months. I think I did maybe one and a half drawings um, and I hate that, man. I thrive when I can sit down and draw stuff. Um, there was one night where I just got a piece of canvas out and slathered it with ink and um, made little patterns with alcohol and stuff and uh, just a stress relief, <laughs> just to relieve myself. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's been a, wi a wild ride and uh, I'm relieved to have gotten to the point where I've, I'm able to make a decision um, for myself and, uh, and realize that, you know, some things just aren't meant to be. Um, you know, money is not really worth sacrificing your mental health. And I think that that was the path that I was on and I really feel like I could have succeeded if I'd kept going, um, but I just didn't, I didn't want to. I was listening to this podcast about um, selling, it was called Fanatical Prospecting um, by Jeb Blunt, and it was actually pretty good for, a, um, for an audiobook about sales. Um, of all things that I didn't think I'd ever listen to, that was... That was up there. Um, but anyway, everything he said was true. Um, and a lot of it, you know, could have and can relate to just life in general. So it was actually pretty interesting to listen to. Um, but the bottom line was that you're going to hate every single day that you do this. You're going to have to get on the phone. You're going to have to make phone calls. And you're going to hate it. <laughs> And I think that's when it really hit me. I was walking Zeus 
And he said that for like the fifth time. And I was like, damn, I don't want to hate what I'm doing every day. That sounds horrible. I don't want to. So, anyway. I know I said that I was done talking about this, but now I'm really done talking about this. That That's, that's the bottom line. I, I don't want to do something that I hate. Not for any amount of money. Um, it's just not worth it. So. Anyway. Uh... I guess that's about uh, <laughs> I guess that's about it. I I don't really have much else to say other than I hope all of you are doing well. I uh now that I've finally made a video and gotten rid of a bunch of footage that I have been meaning to share in this video, which is kind of long now. I think it's like 20 minutes or something now. Um now that I've done that I feel like I can start making videos again. You know when, when, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but if, if you make videos, um, your footage just builds up and you get so overwhelmed, you don't really know where to start and you just keep putting off making videos and that's kind of where I was, but, uh, I think I've gotten it all out of me here in this, uh, this here video and, um, yeah. So, gonna go get some new footage and share my life with you some more. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you, and I hope you have a fantastic week, or weekend, or wherever you are listening and watching this right now. Um, treat yourself right, listen to your instincts, uh, and your heart and stuff, and, um, yeah. Be kind to yourself and to others and all that good stuff. Okay. Bye. <laughs>